Hello everybody, this is Dr. Kevin Novak again. I'm going to talk about TDS, or in other words, connectivity. Now, as we all know, if you have distilled water uh, or deionized water, it could be a connectivity of zero. What I'm going to do here is measure my tap water, and you'll see how low it is. Now, this connectivity measurement and my aquarium is 220 and this connectivity measurement is reading right out of the tap at uh, it'll be a 101. Does that mean my aquarium is bad? Uh, this connectivity can change out of your tap from summer to winter depending on the chemicals that are going to be put into the treatment plant and believe me they do change their chemicals and these chemicals are very hazardous chemicals and some people who work at the plant don't like touching these chemicals because they're so hazardous and that's what's going in your water it goes in your water and it can vary the connectivity of your water and this is ours from Lake Michigan my tanks 220 though does that mean my water and my tank is degrade it does that mean my water quality is bad compared to the tap water connectivity has nothing to do with how clear or how good something is it's a secondary measurement and the EPA says between 0 to 500 parts per million is drinking water that's what they rated it what you're looking at here is a wire discharge machine and this is a wire EDM machine and it uses a wire with a corona of electricity on it and water. Now this water has a connectivity of only one or two. You can put your hand in it, you won't get shocked because as we know, water is non-conductive. And this is proof right here that it is non-conductive. The whole machine is metal and if it uh, was conductive, uh, the person running the machine would be shocked to death. So water is non-conductive. The thing about this is, um, this machine cuts all kinds of steel and it also cuts carbide. Carbide has cobalt in it and the cobalt is released in the water and that makes the water hazardous. So this is not drinkable water even though it's filtered with three micron filters it has a conductivity of only two yet because it has cobalt in it uh, the EPA says you can't dump it down the drain. It's got to be put in 55 gallon drums. It's hazardous material. Okay, so if we looked at the TDS of this, we would say this is great water quality. No, it's non drinkable. It's poison. You couldn't put a fish in it. You can't drink it. Here it is right there. The conductivity is only two. This is a Swiss machine, so they read the conductivity as a K. But anyhow, that is your conductivity of that machine. One thing about very low connectivity, like when, when someone says, oh, I have uh, 50 parts per million of TDS, low connectivity has a tendency to rust, even stainless steel. This is D2, the clamp is stainless steel, and look at it rusting. And this is only after 48 hours, because low connectivity does that. You would think high connectivity would be more prone to rusting metal but it isn't the lower the connectivity the faster metal rust and at 48 hours look at how this is rusted depending on the quality of the stainless is how fast you'll start rusting the part and this is d2 which is high chrome high carbon steel which falls under the stainless steel family uh, but it's already rusting within 48 hours real bad that's why in these machines they want to get the part in and get it out as soon as possible because of degrading of the steel and degrading of carbide. It starts degrading the cobalt. And low connectivity will actually degrade carbide. And that, we all know what carbide, carbide steel drills, it's on your saw blades and everything else. But this gives you a little idea that even though the connectivity is extremely low, even though the water has been filtered with one uh, two to three micron filters, it's non-drinkable water. It may, the turbidity of the water gets very, very dirty. It will clean up to crystal clear. Sure, if you're down to two micron filter, 
It's non-drinkable. It's hazardous waste according to the EPA, and it's got to be dumped according to the EPA. So connectivity doesn't really say you have good water quality. My water is 220 because of the substrate I use. It has a lot of iron in it. It has magnesium in it. Uh, these are all coming and leaching out. Now I'm going to show you a hobbyist pond, and here it is, and I'll let it do the rest of the talking for me for a little while. Okay, let's, let's see what it looks like in the pond. This is the filter. That, that would be all yeah. black and cruddy and slimy. Yeah, but it's the filter working, doing its thing. Now we added, now what you can't see underneath here, Kevin, is I got upside down milk crates, upside down, mm -hmm. and then there's a basket underneath this one. Okay. So that the water can still circulate through there. So right here, this mm -hmm. is doubled up. I've oh, got, okay. I've got 36. Stop! I think I counted 36 yesterday. But even, even these that have the plants in there, that's the most crud that there is. Mm -hmm. And since you never really cleaned it. Yeah, but... But if you think about it, this has, as you say, the crud in there. But that's. But you're still reading 123, 129 right. for a TDS. That's uh, that's better than a lot of people with fish tanks. Now, of course. Uh, now here's what I need to know. You see this tuber here that's actually out of the pot. Yeah. Now what do I do with that? You can cut it off and pot it up. You or? can pot that up? Yeah. Really? Because I never know, because they tell you to cut off the old part and discard that's it. That's the new part. This is the new part. That's the new part. The part that's in the basket is the old part. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Because there's several of them like that. Right. Well, that's the new part. Yeah, here's take another one right here. That's another the one right here. Right. See. So we can just it's all ready to be cut. And mm -hmm. just put in another pot. Put in, and if you want. Yeah. yeah, well, I might as well. Stop. Well, I walk over to his pond, I stick the meter in to his pond, and I read a 123. The pond is actually lower in TDS than the anoxic filter. What we were looking at is the anoxic filter. This is his pond. To give you an idea of how big this pond is, about 2,600 gallons, and it's being filtered by an anoxic filter only. There's no other added filters. Some of these fish run they don't look it, but they run anywhere between 25, 28 inches. He feeds over 80 pounds of food in six months. 80 pounds of food in six months. That's a lot of food. He does a water change, of course, where this is fall, as you can tell, and we do our fall water change to close down the pond, and in the spring we do another water change to open the ponds. But uh, I wanted to show you that, that this was something that uh, we took for a person who only does a water change twice a year. He has a TDS of uh, 123, 129 in the anoxic filter. Okay, but this has nothing to do with water quality itself. And as you see, there was a lot of crud and stuff in the anoxic filter, which is what happens because he'll have to clean that out. What it's only telling you is dissolve solids that are in there but you don't know what they are you have no clue what they are apparently what they are what's in there is not hurting the fish now why is a pond that gets fed in six months 80 pounds of food has 26 koi in it ranging anywhere between 25 28 inches long have a lower tds like my pond does a lower tds than my aquarium well it's because my aquarium the substrate if I were to move the substrate, I would probably have a lower TDS. And as you start removing things out of your aquarium, your TDS will drop. But does that have anything to do with water quality? No. The substrate has things in it that are being released into the tank as it ages. You know, like magnesium, stuff like that. That's all going to change your TDS. Does not judge water quality. It's, that's why it's a secondary judgment of quality of water. It's not a primary. It's secondary. So just because somebody has a 
50 TDS and somebody has a 500 TDS, does that mean one person has better wa water quality than the other person? Absolutely not. Because things change that you have no control of. Your substrate could be releasing metals. Uh, you could have evaporation and then you're filling your tank up with water that will build, start building up whatever you have there. Let's, for example, you could have sodium in your water or calcium. We have a lot of calcium in our water. So what happens is when you don't change the water, you just start building up calcium. But that doesn't affect the fish. As you notice, my, my discus, they're not being affected by a 220 TDS. It means nothing to them. Water quality is dependent upon the nitrates, which is one to two parts per million, phosphates, which is zero. They don't want ammonia. They don't uh, want uh, nitrites. Uh, there are some other factors involved that the anoxic filter takes care of. I, c I don't have enough time to get into it that uh, bother fish. But those are what judge the water quality, not the... Not the TDS. In fact, my antique tank has a TDS, TDS of 310. So it's even higher because it only gets a water change about every six months. It's got a 310. You can't determine your water quality by your TDS because your municipal water judges that. And they determine what your TDS or conductivity is going to be from the tap. What you need to do is concentrate more on the quality of water and not the TDS because you don't know what the TDS is reading. Like me, I know what my TDS is re reading. It's reading sodium and it's reading calcium. And we get a white crust around our fish tanks here from Lake Michigan water. That's how hard it is. So my conductivity is raising only because I know when I keep adding water, I'm just adding more calcium to an already hard water situation. And that's easy to see by the white crust on top of the fish tanks. It's just part of the nature of the beast. If you want to use RO water, well, you got to waste two gallons to make one gallon. Now, I don't know about you, but here, uh, Lake Michigan water, we get a surcharge for every gallon we use because that's to replace pipes. And then we get a sewage charge for every gallon we use. So not only do we pay for water, but we pay for sewer, and we pay a surcharge. So if I'm going to make one gallon of good water and waste two gallons of bad water, I have to pay for that water. Even though it's going down the drain, I have to pay for it. And that gets kind of expensive because we pay a premium for our water here in uh, uh, Illinois for our Chicago water because we're having Lake Michigan water. But if you stick with breeders or you stick with someone... Uh, in your neck of the woods where you're buying your fish or if you have hard water make sure you get fish from hard water if you have soft water it's best that you buy fish from hard water you're going to have to acclimate them to the soft water and that means uh, you would just have less of the sodium and stuff like that and calcium in the water that I do but all it's re reading dissolved solids total dissolved solids is reading the total charge mineral content of water. Mineral content of water. That is what it's reading. Your mineral content is going up. That doesn't mean the water quality is going bad or south on you because you're reading minerals. That just means that it is reading something from the meter, the conductivity, that what it can measure it cannot measure poisons. It cannot measure like arsenic. It cannot measure anything, uh, let's say, uh, pesticides or deodorants or anything like that. It can't measure that, things like that. The TDS won't tell you that. If you happen to be spraying a bottle of Windex and it got into your tank and poisoned your tank, the you know, conductivity meter is not going to measure that. It's only measuring minerals that are in your tank. And that minerals aren't necessarily always a bad thing. But a lot of people will take the TDS and say, well, if I start out in the beginning of the month, my TDS is 54, and at the end of the month, it's 56. I apparently took care of my water. 
Well, no, you kept your mineral content of your water low. Doesn't mean you have good water. There's other things in water that pollute it that become primary, not secondary. So when hobbies feel bad, and I always have them come up to me and say, oh, I got a TDS meter, and my TDS is so high, and I tell them, just take the TDS meter because you don't know how to read it correctly, and don't worry about it. Uh, you're reading minerals. You're not reading water quality. Then I have to go, and then I have to start testing for, you know, the ammonia, nitrates, and all these things that they can't test for or, or don't have the ability to test for. And then I start measuring redox, and I start measuring ORP, and then I start measuring whether they have a ne negative or positive. And then, then they say, oh, wow, uh, uh, I have these stones at the bottom of my pond, and you're reading negative. Is that bad? I said, yeah, that means you got... Uh, got some bad things going on when you're reading a negative 400 underneath these stones and uh, that's bringing your water quality down. People don't understand that. When they put your substrate on the bottom of a tank, read your ORP at the bottom of that substrate and see if it goes in a negative ORP or does it stay in an oxidizing state of an ORP. To give you an idea of ORP is uh, bleach has a redox of 2000 it's an oxidizer bleach is an oxidizer uh, hydrogen peroxide is an oxidizer so if you put hydrogen peroxide in your water you can actually raise your ORP because it will oxidize things in your water bleach is such a high oxidizer that uh, it Ebola bacteria was a uh, virus was killed with it where they used it to spray the hospitals and stuff to keep them cleaner than what they were so that it wouldn't keep spreading the virus. And not all bleaches are made the same. You've got to buy regular bleach that will actually disinfect and clean and not some of the other bleaches. But anyhow, those tell you about water quality when you have ORP. TDS does not. Good water quality is always going to be in the positive if you start deteriorating, like if you have hydrogen sulfide, you're starting to get uh, anaerobic conditions. If you put your probe into your substrate and see if you start getting negative because uh, ORP, then your water quality is deteriorating. Yet your TDS could be 40. You understand what I mean? Your TDS is not reading water quality. It's only reading minerals that are in the water doesn't read water quality. Now I know you can use a meter for all kinds of things but but you know to tell when you're going to do water change which is fine and good but don't say or tell other hobbyists oh this is a sign that I have good or bad water quality. No I put water in my tank and the calcium raises. That's what I'm doing. It doesn't mean my water quality is deteriorating because my fish are doing fine. It just means I have more calcium than I did the day before when I put the water in because calcium will build up and it doesn't evaporate. Well, I'm sorry I ran out of time. I wish I could really go a little bit more into this, but I can't. I'm limited on time. Anyhow, uh, this is Dr. Kevin Novak. Uh, I hope you enjoy your aquariums. And until next time, I'll be talking to you later. Bye-bye.